Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the PicoVision. So the PicoVision is a microcontroller based digital video stick for bold audio visual adventures. It features a dual RP2040, that is two separate RP2040 microcontrollers and a conveniently HDMI shaped output. So a nice full size connector. You can make glitch art, retro inspired games, demos, digital signage, and so much more. It features this dual RP2040 controllers. One acts as the main CPU and the other as a GPU graphics processing unit for taking care of the display. This frees up the Pico W, aka the main CPU, for all the fun stuff. So crunching numbers, generating cool graphic effects, and doing really interesting stuff with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can output visuals to almost any HDMI display, be it a standard monitor, giant projector, or a tiny little panel for building a prop. You can get started in minutes, everything's preloaded with MicroPython, no soldering required, you're ready to go. So you can make some homebrew games, you can make digital art, recreate beloved demos from the 80s, you can make screensavers or Winamp visuals, you can visualize data, you can subvert advertising billboards, you can emulate CFAX, because why not? Or you can whip up some last minute signage for your cyber night market. So let's have a deeper dive on some of these features. So like I said, it contains the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is a dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz with 264K of RAM. It has two megs of QSPI flash for storing your programs. It's powered and programmable by the USB micro B connector, and it has 2.4 gigahertz wireless and Bluetooth 5.2 on board as well. Now the GPU processor is an additional RP2040, and this is another dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz up to 264k of RAM. It can actually run at higher resolution modes if you overclock the GPU and it connects to the CPU as a I squared C device internally. Now there's an additional two times eight meg of PS RAM and this means we can store frames off the screen ready to be displayed very very quickly and it can switch between those very very fast. Digital video output over HDMI which means that we can plug this like I said into any monitor that will take a HDMI input and it has a digital to audio line converter as well and it has a PCM 5100A DAC for line level audio over I2S. Very technical stuff there but essentially it just means it does audio out using the I2S protocol and it has the 3.5 millimeter jack for doing that as well, stereo jack. Has a micro SD card slot as well so you can store all your graphics, sprites and things on there. It has three user buttons as well, one wide to the CPU and two for the GPU. Has a reset button for really convenient resetting of the device, a status LED on the GPU and it has a Quest Stemma QT connector as well so you can plug in additional boards and connectors and sensors and things. Comes fully assembled so there's no soldering required and there's some spare extra pins broken out on the unpopulated headers. These do require some soldering. And it comes with of course the C++ and MicroPython libraries from Pimroni as well. So let's take a look at the accessory pack as well. So this is an optional pack that you can buy along with the PicoVision. So it comes with a PicoVision board, a 50 centimeter HDMI cable for plugging into a monitor, a USB-A to micro B cable for programming the CPU, a micro USB splitter cable for connecting the USB accessories, such as a keyboard if you wanted to play Doom, for example, and some Velcro pads so you can actually mount this behind your monitor as well. Highly recommend getting this. And if you want to look at the schematic, we have the, uh, the pins and dims, as they say. You can look on here. We've got the micro SD card, the Quest connector at the top, we've got a little DAC chip, we've got the line out, the uh, uh, HDMI connector. On the bottom right there, we have all the uh, breakout pins, so you can solder additional headers on there if you want to. You can debug the CPU or GPU. And on the left hand side there, we've got the, uh, the power in as well. And there's a whole bunch of mounting holes as well. So you can see the, the regular mounting holes for the, uh, the Pico as well. There we go, and then the mount, didn't drop it. And then on the other side there, you can see we have the mounting holes for the, for the Pico. A printable PDF is available and the schematic will be coming shortly too. So how does this work? This is really, really ingenious. So PicoVision features two RP2040s, one for the Pico W, which is the main CPU, which is the, one, the main one on the board. And it also has one for the GPU uh, to produce the high resolution, uh, particularly for a microcontroller, digital video output by swapping the contents of two physical PS RAM frame buffers back and forth between them. So very, very clever use of a uh, frame buffers there and two processors working in tandem. So the two PS RAM acts as a front and back buffer. The CPU, the Pico W, writes, the CPU, the Pico W, writes one while the GPU, 
read to the other one and apply some hardware effects to generate the digital video signals. And the ingenious firmware for PicoVision's GPU has been developed by a considerable help from longtime collaborator and software wizard Mike Bell. So connecting additional breakouts, so we do have the Quest connector on board here as well, the uh, quick Stemma QT connector, and that means we can plug in additional sensors. We're going to have a look at the CO2 sensor in a minute on the demo. Uh, you can have all kinds of additional breakouts on there. If your breakout has the Quest connector on board, you can simply plug it straight in using the JSTSH to JSTSH cable. To see a full product page of all the different types of breakouts that are currently compatible with our Pico board range, check out the, uh, the product page below. Okay, so some things to note. So there is a list of all the supported resolutions for the product on the product page uh, and some caveats. Note that some modes may require overclocking the, the CPU and other shenanigans. Uh, by default, the reset button resets both the CPU and the GPU. And if for some reason you want to be able to change that, there is a cuttable trace on the back of the board as well. A little cuttable trace just there. We've broken out some spare pins as unpopulated headers along the bottom of the board. And you can find the serial wire debug pins for both the CPU and GPU there as well plus a number of unused gpio because why not our software doesn't support audio over hdmi but if you're brave enough to pass i to s audio data from the cpu or the ps ram buffers to the digital video connector the board is wired to support that as with all of our pico aboard range it comes with a pico w aboard so there's a regular Raspberry Pi Pico W surface mounted to the board. This means you get all the advantages of the RP2040 microcontroller, a speedy fast dual core arm processor, a dynamic growing ecosystem, and it really is growing now, uh, of all different methods for experimenting with. And most excitingly though, the Pico W comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. So this means you can communicate with each other, other devices, and of course, get data from the internet. Okay, demo time. So looking forward to showing you this. So over here on the captain's table, I've got the Pico Vision, and I've also got a CO2 sensor plugged into the Quest connector there using a JSTSH to JSTSH cable. And we can also see that there's a little LED. If I just turn the overhead light off a second, you can see there there's a little act button, which just shows you that it's connected and everything's working uh, as expected. So that's our indicator that uh, we're good to go. So let me get back to this view over here. And you can see there, this is the, the view from the Pico Vision itself. So I've got it plugged into a capture card and we can see over here that it's running um, a, what it calls Pico Visios 2.1, which is the operating system that this one is using. And we've got this menu system with the uh, CO2 bouncing logo and so on. And there's also some flying toasters as well, uh, which is hacking back to that screensaver. I think on the, was it after dark screensavers that had these, there was a flying toasters one, uh, particularly on the Mac. So we've got these three buttons on the Pico Vision and we've programmed these to respond to different things. So the first button will make it go up the menu and then wrap round. The other button will make it uh, move down the menu. And then if we press the Y button, it will action that particular menu item. So I've just pressed on the CO2 sensor. So we've got our CO2 sensor plugged in and we can see there that it's currently taking a reading of what's that 1100 or 1111 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. And we can also see that it's got a temperature at 25 degrees C and a humidity of 41%. Uh, so the temperature is actually coming from the onboard temperature sensor. Um, I think that's right. It might actually be coming from the, uh, the CO2 sensor. Not 100% sure on that one. There is a demo in a second where we just use the onboard um, temperature sensor, so we'll check that. Now you can also see that it's drawing a graph on screen. So it's using the graphics capabilities of the Pico Vision, using the uh, Pico Graphics module. And this means we can draw nice vector graphics, particularly for things like graphs. It's got really sharp graphics, really nice big text. And you could have this on your screen. You could have this in a factory or wherever you're working uh, to demonstrate what the current uh, air quality levels are like. So I'm going to hit the reset button now. Just let it reset back to the main menu and uh, we will then press another option on here. So let's go for the bouncing logo next. Let's get the wrong one there and press Y. It's now going to run the bouncing logo uh, demo program. So you can see they've got Pimeroni, we've got a nice um, rainbow effect going on there and a grid of uh, cubes or something. And we've got this little pirate man bouncing around the screen. Let's see if he ever gets to the exact corner. Yes, he just did. If I hold down the Y button, we can get a couple more pirates bouncing around. I think you can have up to four on this particular demo. And it just shows you how smooth and how easy it is to draw uh, graphics on the screen like so. 
So I'm just going to hit the uh, reset button again. And this time we're going to go for a different one. We're going to go for alert. I love this one. So let's go for alert. So this reminds me very much of Starship Enterprise. We've got not alert, the alert status. And you can see there we've got some little ships as well. We've got the, is that the PMC? Is that like a Pimroni ship? We have Thargoid as well. So let's press the Y button. Oh, red alert, red alert. So you can see all the different uh, graphs there are, are showing that the alert levels are not good. Uh, we've got a, a ship that's closer to our little ship down there as well. Uh, we've got a Borg cube there as well. <laughs> It says yellow alert, and if I press Y again, we've got blue alert, no black alert. We've got rainbow alert, which is pretty cool, and then back to not alert again. So, and we've got the TARDIS next to us this time as well, so must be feeling very safe there. So that's the alert demo program. Let's go to the next one, which is a floppy burb. I'm terrible at floppy burb. Let's give this one a go, though. I'm going to press, I always press the wrong direction. There we go. Press Y. So this time we're going to try and win the game. So I'm going to get the bird about middle of the screen. There we go. Oops, way too high. Let's try that again. I kind of... Oh. There we go. <laughs> Terrible. I'm just not very good at this hand-eye coordination stuff. There we go. Let's try and get him flapping about a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I think I scored four was my highest score on this. So yeah, you can create games on this, which is really cool. There we go. Oh, got two. No. <laughs> Four still my high score. Honest. Right, so let's go for the magic mirror next. So if I go... There we go, Magic Mirror. So Magic Mirrors were all the rage, weren't they, a couple of years ago. Uh, so you get a regular monitor, a HDMI monitor, something like that. And then you put some one-sided mirror film on it. You can buy this sort of mirrored... Um, film that you can put on your windows so that people can't see into your property but you can see out and you can make a magic mirror from that so it looks like a regular mirror but it has these text and graphics showing through it so it looks really cool and you can now build one of these with the simplicity of a uh, pico vision so you can see they've got the outside temperature we've got the wind speed we've got a nice quote there we've got the wi-fi connection that we're connected to the current time and the current date as well let's go for the next demo program then so this one if i try and get this one right there we go down there so we've got pride so this is a cool one. We've got a crab uh, drinking a soda with some shades on with the, uh, the pride flag in the background as well. Okay, next up we have the rainbow wheel. Let's go for this one. So the rainbow wheel, this one demonstrates some nice vector graphics uh, using Pico Vision and using the Pico Graphics uh, Python library. We've got the rainbow wheel spinning round and it's changing colors as well. It's quite hypnotic that. Okay, next up we'll go for screen modes. So let's scroll down to screen modes. So this is going to show us all the different screen modes that we can use on the Pico Vision. It's going to start out with 320 by 240. So let's scroll down to, let's, let's make it a bit more dramatic. Let's go for 960 by 270. And we'll press the Y button to change the mode. It's going to change the mode and reset. It looks very tall and uh, skinny there, that one, doesn't it? Let's go for... Let's go for the old Super VGA 800 by 600. Here we go. So again, that's looking quite small. So the higher the resolution, the smaller the graphics look, but the more that you can fit on the screen. And then finally, we'll go for 1280. Um, what was that by 960, was it? It's so small now we can barely see that. The 720. There we go. And we can make that go back up to the top again, back to 320 by 240 is the basic one is that cga graphics was that back in the day there we go so lots of different modes that we can change and we use in our projects depending on what kind of um, graphics capabilities that we need the, the higher the resolution the slower they'll tend to be because it has to process more graphics on screen okay scroll groups is next this is a really cool demo of how to make things scroll in different groups together on the screen so we've got some clouds, we've got some waves, and we've also got a bit of a surprise on here as well. So there you go, you can see the clouds are scrolling at different parallax. We've got the waves also in different groups there. And we've got the uh, the good ship, um, Pimroni there, with its pirate ship with a rainbow effect on there as well. And there's even a little flag flapping on the middle mast there as well. Love that one. Okay, next up we're going to go for snacks and ladders. So 
I'm going to have to jump over the one that says CFAX. This one looks like a, an old fashioned text, teletext mode on your TV from the, the 1980s, I guess, again. Uh, but there's an issue with the, the XML file from the BBC website that we're getting the news articles from on that one. So uh, we'll have to skip over that one and go straight to snacks and ladders. So we've got, we've got a little dude running around. He's going up some ladders. You can see the snakes there scrolling about nice and smooth. Got all nice colours on there as well. This looks like something from uh, like a 1980s retro uh, computer, home computer. Got the fire at the bottom as well. The floor is lava. Cool. So that's the uh, snacks and ladders. But then I'm going to go for Starfield. Let's go down to Starfield. There we go. So Starfield looks like a, a screensaver from Windows 3.1 to me. You're on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise and you can viewing forward while you're going into warp. Or you're in the Millennium Falcon and you're about to go to light speed as well. <laughs> okay, so next up we've got the onboard thermometer. So let's uh, scroll down to that one. Thermometer, here we go. So this is taking readings from the Pico's onboard thermometer and you can see that the core temperature of the CPU is 31.26 degrees Celsius at the moment. So it's not room temperature, it's just the, the temperature of the actual processor. And it's going to draw a graph on there. You can see that red line that's appearing on the left-hand side there. That's actually a graph of the temperature of the main CPU. Okay, let's go for the next one, which is the vector clock. So we've got two versions of the vector clock. Let's go for this down here. So the first clock looks like um, it's got a very staccato hand ticking uh, each of the seconds away there. We can see the hand for the minutes as well is moving every five seconds as well. Uh, nice and sharp graphics on this one, a very clear clock display. Now, say we wanted a bit more upmarket clock, we wanted like a Rolex where it has a sweeping hand rather than that sort of staccato, uh, cheaper watch. Let's uh, go for a different demo to show you the smooth vector. Smooth. So you can see that it's now smoop, smooping, swooping around the clock face very, very smoothly. What I particularly like about this is you can even make out the edge of that uh, red um, second hand. That's got a nice sharp edge to it. It even has a little shadow on there as well, which is pretty cool. So look at that as it sweeps round. You can even see there that the shadow is correct as well as if there was light shining through it. Uh, that's moved around as the clock hand sweeped round. So that's the Pico Vision. So if you like this kind of video, you like electronics, Raspberry Pis, Picos and so on, MicroPython, I have an entire YouTube channel dedicated to such things. So if you go over to youtube.com slash kevibaklia28 or visit kezrobots.com, you'll find all kinds of videos there. I most recently did one about the Raspberry Pi 5 and the projects that you have to make specifically for the Raspberry Pi 5. So be sure to check that one out. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.